Hi all, Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot London and our short little stroll around London today is going to bring us down the area known as Pall Mall. And Pall Mall connects Trafalgar Square towards the beautiful St. James's Palace. And Pall Mall is home to some of the most exclusive gentlemen's clubs in the world where the right sort of chaps mingle with the right sort of chaps. So the likes of Winston Churchill, Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens, all my former past members. This particular club is the Institute of Directors. And as the name suggests, it has to, you have to be a director or CEO of the company in order for membership. You might just notice those little beautiful gas lamps all along. They light them up for special occasions outside the IOD or the Institute of Directors. You'll see the flag there. Now just to let you know exactly where we are. So if you look straight ahead of you there, zooming in, that is Trafalgar Square and the National Gallery. And straight up here, directly in front of me, behind these memorials, the location of Piccadilly Circus. So the place we're concerned today is this street here, Palma. So we are going to Chicago Square behind us, all the way down to the end of Palma here, down towards St. James's Palace. I'm going to tell you a few interesting stories about St. James's Palace. And one of my favourite monarchs, King Charles II, a merry monarch. King Charles II was notorious for his love of women. He had seven mistresses and reputedly about 18 illegitimate children. But more on that to come in a moment. This is the Athenaeum. And as you can see, the most intellectual of all the clubs. If you have a look there, you'll see the Greek god of Athenia. Now these gentlemen's clubs, exclusive for Gentlemen's memberships traditionally, the likes of Winston Churchill, Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens, all former past members of these gentlemen's clubs. And in some cases, there's even a 30 year waiting list. The majority of these gentlemen's clubs, they quite literally enroll their infant sons at birth in the hope of being able to have a drink with them on their 30th birthdays. So Pall Mall. So the origin of the term Pall Mall, we believe, comes from Pale Malio, which was an Italian game version of, let's say, croquet. And croquet, Pale Malio it was called, and that was a game that was played often by Charles II in this immediate area, Pall Mall. Firstly, you have the Athenaeum here. Now this building beside it is the Travelers Club. You were, I believe the requirement was you had to have traveled up to 100,000 miles around the world in order for membership. Beside this one is the Reform Club. Now the Reform Club is famously where Phileas Fogg made his fictional bet to travel around the world in 80 days. Michael Palin of Monty Python fame took on that challenge and he returned here to boast about his prowess and how successful he was. However, they refused him entry because he wasn't wearing a tie. So very strict dress code in this area for these gentlemen's clubs. Now reputedly, well, actually the prime minister, this is fact, of Great Britain, it's automatic membership to these gentlemen's clubs. But ladies had been forbidden for centuries. It had to be suggested by a male member. 
So we're just walking along here. Sorry about that. I just want to get a proper visual when between these vans. But the prime, so the ladies were refused membership. But Prime Minister of Great Britain gets automatic membership. So they were left in a rather sticky situation in 1979 when the only female British Prime Minister in history, Margaret Lady Thatcher, was elected. So in true Thatcher style, she organised a meeting with these gentlemen's clubs and she told them in no uncertain terms, I am Prime Minister and I shall be a member. And they agreed to her membership, provided she signed an agreement actually making her an honorary male member. So, ladies are now allowed to become members. They have to be suggested, of course, by a male member, but it's traditionally gentlemen's clubs, where the right sort of chaps, as it were, mingle with the right sort of chaps. They all have their little doormen on the front as well to escort you in. They've been using several movies over the years, of course, the likes of um, old James Bond, Downton Abbey, Lady Mary dined in one of these gentlemen's clubs when she brought Anna to London for the doctor's visit that time. Oh, Margaret Thatcher made her uh, eulogy for Ronald Reagan in the Nash Rooms, named after the celebrated architect John Nash in the Institute of Directors Club. I just want to bring you over here because a very famous artist lived in this building here. And there's also rich history with regards to the royals in this area particularly King Charles II and his famous mistress, a lady by the name of Nell Gwyn. But here's one of our circular blue plaques in London. This is where Thomas Gainsborough, the artist, lived in this building. The sun is directly in my eyes, so let's see famous artist who lived here from 1727 to 1788. Thomas Gainsborough's address. And along here, one of the more famous residents along Pall Mall was a young orange seller. At the tender age of 14, she sold oranges in the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, the oldest working theatre in London, reputedly the most haunted, and her name was Nell Gwynne. Now, Nell Gwynne was working as an orange, orange seller during the theatre performances, and they were required to be scantily clad. And during one of those performances, the gentleman in the audience would use these orange sellers to uh, send little romantic notes back to the actresses in the back of the theater and they were tipped and were received gratuities but she herself began acting and she caught the eye of king charles ii the merry monarch now king charles ii of england was notorious for his many mistresses he was married, however, to Lady Catherine of Braganza of Portugal, but allegedly had seven mistresses and up to 17 illegitimate children. Once he caught the eye of Nell Gwynne, however, she was one of his more famous mistresses, and he wasn't shy about parading her around. And in fact, coming up here, it's a very interesting story because here, is the most official senior and royal working palace of them all. So you'll see how close Nell Gwynne and Charles II actually were. Now this is St. James's Palace and I will speak a bit about that first but I want you to have a little look over here to 
see this little passage here, and I'll come back to it in a moment. Underneath Quebec House is Crown Passage. And that has a very famous pub down there that I'll come back to in just a minute, called the Red Lion. And we'll see that in just a moment. But St. James's Palace was built in the 1530s by Henry VIII for his second wife, Anne Boleyn. However, we famously know she never saw it as her com completion because she had her head chopped off in the Tower of London two years prior to its completion. Now, the most official senior and royal and oldest royal working palace, not oldest royal working palace, but the most official and senior in London of them all. Buckingham Palace, in fact, is only in the court of St. James's Palace. Now, it's seen many births, many marriages, all take place in here. It's where King Charles II and his brother, James II, were both born in here and two of James II's daughters, Mary and she in turn had 17 children in here, 17 miscarriages. Very tragic story. One of her children did survive, but not for very long. It's been where Victoria married Albert in here, her beloved husband. And if you look closely on the clock on top there, you will see the insignia of William IV. Now, when the Queen is in residence, those two sentry boxes that are usually situated beside the gate, the medieval gate there, will be occupied by soldiers of the Queen to protect the main entrance. But it was where Charles I, the father of Charles II, actually spent his very last night before his very public execution on the 30th of January in 1649. Now, it kind of lost its significance in around, as a royal residence, in around the Georgian period, because King George III of England was the one who developed Buckingham Palace, and that became the favored residence of the royal families. But getting back to King Charles II, so he lived very close to the residence of his favorite mistress, Nell Gwynne. Now, we all know the royal family likes a drink, and this pub we're going to head down to is reputedly where many a member of the royal family have drank. And what I love is there's a legend here in London that there were secret underground tunnels under this pub which connected the residence of Nell Gwyn and the residence of King Charles II to the underground here in this pub. And it was it under the tunnels down here that they would meet for their romantic or their clandestine affair in the Red Lion. Now, former patrons, the Georgians, and as I said, the Queen Mother has had a drink in here, Edward VIII favoured it as well. And it's just off the beaten track here, reputedly the second oldest license in the West End, the village pub of St. James's. It's one of those old British traditional style pubs. Beautiful place to visit and pretty much off the tourist track, even though it's so close to St. James's and Buckingham Palace. But I love the idea of the underground tunnels here where Nell Gwyn and Charles II would meet underneath the cellars and connecting one residence to another. However, however likely that is, seems it might be a little bit slim because he wasn't shy about his affairs. He was quite happy to parade Nell Gwynne all over London. And this area, we're gonna bring you out then up this beautiful store. Ladies and gents, this is Lock and Co. This is one of the, is the oldest 
hat makers in the world. Exclusive hats for the likes of Churchill. They made hats for Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson of Nelson's Collium, the famous victor of the Battle of Trafalgar. Exclusive hat store, the inventor of the bowler hat, actually. Uh, in more recent years, the likes of Catherine Middleton, um, Camilla Parker Bowles, very famous hat company, and has the royal warrant as well. Now we're entering a very exclusive part of London. So we've just left Crown Passage, which connects Pall Mall here to King Street. Well, King Street, you'll see the familiar red flags down here of Christie's Auction House. There's a diamond sold in there recently for £72 million. Pounds. The famous for selling Monet's and Picasso's and even Banksy's. Banksy's work, the famous London street artist, makes millions and millions of dollars and considers some of its more celebrity clients over the years would have been Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Now, we still have a few more gentlemen's clubs along here, but I just want to show you a few other little bits along the way. Trufford and Hill. A very exclusive barbers. And if you just look above the sign, you will see the Royal Warrant. Issued to shops that have been supplying goods and services to the Queen and the Royal Family for five years or more. Highly coveted, as you can imagine. And the majority of shops along here have the Royal Warrant. And three members of the royal family can issue it. So here's a good example of them. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II herself, her husband the Duke of Edinburgh, and Prince Charles. Can famously be stripped from a store at any time, however, at a moment's notice. It all depends on the discretion of the royal family. And Love and Cole, famous boot makers here in London. Okay, so I might cross over because I want to get a view of this side of the street better. And that will probably serve us better across the road. So where you are right now is St. James's Street. And there is St. James's Palace where we just were. So I've just come down the little alleyways. And if you take this street up here, it'll bring you all the way up to the street called Piccadilly. Now the street itself, well I'll show you that in a moment by the world famous Ritz Hotel. Okay. Now, you will see quite a few cigar makers along here as well. Now this is William Evans, exclusive gentleman shopping yet again. Boots, flasks, seems like a, some form of a hunting store, clothing for hunting. <laughs> and I want to bring you up to see White's Club, which is the actual oldest gentleman's club in London. Now, James J. Fox, exclusive cigar merchant. A little smoke room inside where you can sample the finest cigars. No doubt, the majority from Cuba. But James J. Fox reputedly sold cigars to Winston Churchill, arguably the most famous British Prime Minister in history. However, Davidoff up here as well also claimed to have sold cigars to Churchill which is highly possible as he was a member also of White's Club up here. Here's Justerini and Brooks, famous whiskey maker. Again, also has the Royal Seal of Approval. The 
Royal Family shop here, JMB Whiskey, which most of you will be familiar with. And Berry Brothers and Rudd is also on the street, exclusive wine merchants. They trade in wine all over the world. Now, here's the Queen's chemist, Dr. Harris and Co., the official chemist of the Queen. This is Bull's Y Club, which is based on the Blades Gentlemen's Club in the James Bond movies. Some say it's where the term shaken and not stirred was invented. Now well, that might be fiction. So fine cigars here by Davidoff across the road. They have a lovely outdoor seating area there. sample some of the finest cigars from all over the world. Again, another client, Winston Churchill. And straight up here, this big, huge, beautiful grey building. It's the oldest gentleman's club in the world. This is White's Club. Now, the specific building is the one here with the black railings in front. Now, Prince Charles held his bachelor party in here the night before he married Princess Diana. Automatically, when Prince William was born, he was admitted as a member. But another interesting story involves a gentleman called the Earl of Sandwich. A compulsive gambler who liked to spend a lot of his time in these gentlemen's clubs, and this one in particular. And during one very long gambling session, he called the waiter over and requested that the waiter make him something very quick to eat that he can eat without leaving the gambling table. So he brought him two pieces of bread and some meat in 1792. He sandwiched them together, and hence the name Sandwich, or the Earl of Sandwich was invented. Now the term Sandwich was invented. I believe the actual Sandwich itself had been, was being sampled, particularly in Turkish delis in Turkey with meats and platters of meat and bread served together. But effectively the cheap Sandwich that we know, and the Sandwich 300 million I saw, are consumed in the United States but the birth of the sandwich here in the UK 1792 all as a result of a gambling addiction of the Earl of Sandwich <coughs> Excuse me. now this street is Piccadilly Piccadilly extends all the way down to Piccadilly Circus this way oh sorry sir excuse me and this side with the world famous Ritz Hotel Piccadilly founded by the Swiss hotelier Cesar Ritz Charlie Chaplin's actually worked in the Ritz as well it's where Margaret Thatcher was convalescing for three months before she died inside the building. And it's been a celebrity haunt for years and years. Probably one of the more famous things to do in London is afternoon tea in the Ritz. Well, the main entrance is here. Very elegant inside of the Ritz Hotel. We've been fortunate enough to have afternoon tea in there. The beautiful ballroom. Uh, you are required to dress accordingly for afternoon tea in the Ritz. There's just something else I wanted to show you over here as well. And this is another one of our circular blue plaques. And this is to commemorate. These are the blue heritage plaques. This is to commemorate Robert Walpole. 
Robert Walpole is famous because he was Prime Minister of Britain and his son Horace Walpole was a writer but Robert Walpole was the first also to take up residence and to officially make 10 Downing Street the residence of the Prime Minister in London. So the Ritz on Piccadilly and I just want to show you its close proximity to Green Park right next door. It's a big favourite of Elizabeth Taylor, the Ritz as well. She also favoured the Dorchester, which is on Park Lane. I believe she uh, had several honeymoons there. And this is the walkway here to the beautiful Ritz. So if you are planning on coming to London and you would like afternoon tea in the Ritz, I would pre-book ladies and gents because very popular here. Everything is it's a bit closed up in a moment, but in the 17th of May, these will be all opening up again. So London is alive. And we will be looking forward to welcoming you all back soon. It's one of the red telephone boxes here. And this is still the street Piccadilly. And Piccadilly, we believe, gets its name from the de decorative white collars. The gentleman wore in Elizabethan and Shakespearean times. Mass production of these Piccadilles took place on a factory along this very street, hence the name Piccadilly. It's a corruption of Piccadill. And the tailor that invented the Piccadill, who acquired a massive fortune as a result of the popularity of this Piccadill was a gentleman called Robert Baker. But I'm just bringing you over here to see where the underground is so you'll know how to access this area. And right over here. It's a beautiful green park which we featured on my Westminster tour. So to find your way here, you just come to Green Park Station and you exit directly into the park. Everybody's enjoying the sunshine. We'll take you back here again, just to show you the street you're on. This is Piccadilly. So just a small little tour today, ladies and gents. Hope you enjoyed those little bits of information along the way. Sinead is my name, a guide with free tours by Foot London. Don't forget to check out our other tours. We're all over the world, the US, Berlin. We're in New Orleans, New York. Several of them online. Our public tours are beginning as well, you guys. So if you'd like to join us in person, we'd be delighted to welcome you. Full schedule is on the details below. Please like and subscribe for future little walk with me tours around London. I'll be doing quite a few in the next few days. And if there's anywhere in particular you can think of that you'd like me to go, please don't hesitate to ask. I'd be happy to do that and guide it for you. But for right now, Sinead here. I'm going to sign out. Hopefully speak to you all very soon again. If you would like to buy me a cup of coffee, you're welcome to do so, or a nice cold pint, maybe, on a beautiful day here in London. Just check the subscription below, the links below, and I will be speaking to you again very soon. Sinead, signing out for free tours by Foot London.